When you're the Denver Broncos, you had this great 2013, and frankly, you've been on a good little run the past couple of seasons. The 2011 season, you had a terrible starting quarterback in Tim Tebow, yet you find a way to make the playoffs and win a playoff game. Then you go off in free agency before the 2012 season. You bring in one of the all-time greats, Peyton Manning, who takes you to a divisional title, takes you to the divisional round of the playoffs before you get upset at home by the Baltimore Ravens. Then you get to the 2013 season. You have this historic, all-time great NFL offense, prolific in its yardage, in its points scored. Peyton Manning sets records for passing yards and for touchdown passes. The Broncos offense sets a record for, I believe, most points scored and most passing touchdowns, obviously, as well. This historic offense really carried this Broncos franchise and organization throughout all of 2013. And then they ended up getting historically dominated by the Seattle Seahawks and the depressive Pete Carroll defense at Super Bowl 48. Part of the problem was that the Denver Broncos were kind of running away and hiding in an inferior conference in 2013, which the AFC clearly was, and you saw that based off of the Super Bowl. You had a very kind of one-dimensional team where the offense was consistently having to carry the Denver Broncos and the defense just wasn't doing much to carry their own weight at all. And at the end of the day, you could sit there and say, well, they made the playoffs three straight years. You know, they made it to the Super Bowl. Um, but at the end of the day, that's all great and all. But you bring in Peyton Manning, you have all this talent there, a supposed talent there. You're supposed to win it all. You were supposed to win Super Bowl championships. And no matter what spin you say, well, at least they got there. Yeah, but you still didn't win the championship. So at the end of the day, does it really fucking matter? Second place is really just the first loser. So it wasn't surprising to me to see John Elway really go all in this offseason or mostly all in this offseason in free agency. You had to figure that maybe some guys like No Sean Moreno and Eric Decker would be allowed to leave via free agency because they maybe felt that they had guys that could take their place already in-house on the roster, um, but that they were going to really try to make this a more balanced and complete football team and go after some immediate impact help, in particular on the defensive side of the football. And that's exactly what John Elway attempted to do by signing DeMarcus Ware away from the Dallas Cowboys, by signing T.J. Ward away from the Cleveland Browns, by signing a kid to leave away from the conference rival New England Patriots. It looks like the Denver Broncos on paper, in theory, got some big help on the defensive side of the ball, help that they desperately needed that they just didn't have in 2013. Then they bring in somebody like an Emmanuel Sanders in free agency to perhaps per replace some of the production that Eric Decker brought as a free agent or as a wide receiver, excuse me. So you take those moves in free agency, which were big aggressive moves that clearly are saying, damn the salary cap in the future, damn what happens three, four years from now. It's about winning, and it's about winning right now. You throw into the mix some returning starters, namely uh, Pro Bowl left tackle Ryan Clady, Pro Bowl all-pro outside linebacker Von Miller into the mix. And there's a lot of reason for optimism if you're a Denver Broncos fan and if you're a part of the Denver Broncos organization. You have a win-now mindset with a team that in theory looks like it is well-equipped to be able to win a championship this year. Now, this might be the year that you have to do it, otherwise it's never going to happen, and ultimately we'll see how things play out. When we look at the draft, I think for the Denver Broncos, it was going to be important for them not so much to have a bunch of great picks, but they needed two to three guys that were going to come in and be immediate contributors on this team. Because, again, you can sit there and say, looking to the future, you know, yeah, guys take a year or two to develop sometimes. Well, the Denver Broncos, frankly, are in a position where they don't care about that, nor should they care about that. You brought Peyton Manning into the mix. As long as you have Peyton Manning there as your starting quarterback, whether it's just for this season, the following season, or the 2016 season is when he calls it quits, that's how long you have to have an opportunity to potentially win a world championship or be a championship contending team. As a result, screw what's going to happen four or five years from now. It's all about right now and guys that can help contribute right now. And when you look at the draft results for the Denver Broncos in the description box below, it's kind of like, eh. I wonder how much immediate help they really got. I wonder if the Denver Broncos maybe would have been better suited getting really aggressive and going after one big star or impact player much higher in the draft. Uh, maybe they, I could have advocated for them trading up. Or if they wanted to focus on the future and look at things from a salary cap standpoint, maybe trading back out of round one and getting some additional picks, maybe in a second and third round pick to go to boot or something like that. I don't know. 
But when you look at maybe their best pick, I suppose it would be Bradley Roby, the cornerback from Ohio State. He probably was the best cornerback on the board, and based off of my rankings, he was. But I wonder how much immediate help and contributions he's really going to give. You know, you've got a kid to leave on one side. At this point in time, even coming back from an ACL injury, I would envision Chris Harris as the second best corner on that Denver Broncos roster at this point in time. So Bradley Roby maybe comes in and contributes in five and ten cent nickel dime packages as a rookie. Maybe he div becomes a starter. But this is a guy in Bradley Roby that you see the physical tools and you see the all pro, pro bowl at least talent and potential that is clearly there that you never really saw at Ohio State. And that was very frustrating. This is a guy that I was looking at as potentially being a top 10 or top 15 pick heading into the 2013 college season. And then I saw him get dismantled by Jared Abbott Darris from Wisconsin, a guy that NFL teams thought so highly of that they allowed him to slip to the end of round five. Yes, he went a little too low in the draft, but it's just to show you that one guy was taken late in the five fifth round, and he dominated a guy that was taken at the end of round number one in Bradley Roby. He might have been the best pick, but I just wonder how much you're going to get out of a Bradley Roby as a rookie. Um, in terms of the best value, it's actually a trade that they made. When I see the Denver Broncos traded out of their late fourth round pick to move back into the fifth round and pick up a fifth rounder in next year's draft, I thought that was actually a pretty good job by the Denver Broncos, getting themselves a little bit of draft pick currency for the 2015 NFL draft. You know, looking at the guy that they took in round five, why take him in round four if you're just going to take him in round five anyways? That was actually probably the best value, to be able to move back from the end of round four to the middle of round five and give up a seventh round pick along with that to get a fifth round pick and then a fifth round pick again next year. Yeah. It's like that for the Denver Broncos. In terms of a guy that could surprise, uh, Cody Latimer, the wide receiver from Indiana, this is a guy that definitely has the size and speed and talent to be a big-time NFL wide receiver. I'm just not sure how ready he is to immediately contribute at the NFL level. And for all the people that are looking at him as a replacement for Eric Decker, I really don't envision him as that type of wide receiver. If you want my honest opinion, I think he may have perhaps been drafted to be a replacement from Demiris Thomas, who's a free agent after the 2014 season. It's just a thought because in terms of size and speed and skill, they're somewhat similar in profile. Raw prospect, just like Thomas was coming out of Georgia Tech in 2010. Latimer has some of those similar characteristics, even though he's not quite as big and I don't think quite as fast as Demiris Thomas was coming out of Georgia Tech. There are some similarities there. Now, is a Latimer going to get some opportunities as a rookie? Perhaps. Could he do a good job in those opportunities? Perhaps. Is he going to see a lot of single coverage if he does find his way on the field because of guys like Demiris Thomas and Julius Thomas and Wes Welker and Emmanuel Sanders? Oh, absolutely. I just wonder how much immediate impact he's really going to have. In terms of things that I would second guess with this Broncos draft, like I said, maybe they were in the position where they needed to make a big, huge, aggressive move up the board um, to get somebody maybe like a Kyle Fuller or to bring in a safety like a um, Ha Ha Clinton Dix or a Calvin Pryor. Maybe they would have been better suited doing that or making a move up the board to go get a Ryan Shazier or a C.J. Mosley to play in the inside of their Broncos 4-3 defense. Uh, Michael Schofield in round number three. Eh. You know, you're taking a right tackle there. I don't think he was even the best right tackle on the board at that point. Flat, flat, I'll just say it. I thought he was a reach, and I questioned that. I questioned waiting until round five to get an inside linebacker, even though I do like Lamen Barrow a little bit as a prospect out of LSU. I think he has some three-down potential as a middle linebacker, but again, I thought that was a pretty big need. And for the Denver Broncos, to me, they were in a position where, based off of their circumstances situation, instead of being at the bottom of the first round and drafting strictly best player available regardless of position of need, to me, if anything, they needed to draft need, 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 impact players at positions of need right away. Um, I also question taking Cody Latimer, where they did trading up to get him at pick number 56. I just wonder, was he really the best receiver on the board at that point in time? Was he really the best receiver for the Denver Broncos at that point in time? Maybe a guy like a Jarvis Landry would have been able to come in and make more of an immediate contribution or impact. Maybe a guy like an Allen Robinson, again, would have been more equipped to come in and make an immediate impact. Again, like I said, I'm not trying to bash on Latimer the prospect because I don't think he was a tremendous reach based off of his size, speed, skill set combination. It's just a matter of I thought there were better wide receivers on the board, and I'm not sure how much he's actually going to contribute as a rookie. Overall, I gave the Denver Broncos a grade of a C.
You know, I like the pick of Bradley Roby for them. I think he has a tremendous amount of upside. This is a guy from a physical skill set standpoint. Could be a Pro Bowl corner in the league. But he's a bit of a project, and he's a bit of a tease sometimes. And he doesn't play up to that immense physical potential that he has. Cody Latimer, a guy, again, that I don't think always played up to the immense physical potential that he has at Indi had at Indiana. Um, you know, a guy like Michael Schofield might be able to play right tackle at the NFL. He might kick inside the guard. I think Barrow could potentially be a dark horse to start on the Broncos' defense in 2014 in the middle. But it just really wasn't a sexy draft, nor did it need to be. I just thought, like I said, maybe they could have gotten a little more immediate impact out of this draft than they ultimately got.